A correlational coefficient shows us the strength and the direction of a relationship between variables. And correlation is the standardized covariance of the variability between variables, which means that these variables share some of their variance. What we want to be able to determine is how much of the variability in one variable is related to variability in the other variable. And that is the measure of effect size for correlation. To get that measure of effect size, we're going to start with the correlational coefficient itself. This is a correlational coefficient of negative 0.62. These variables have a moderately strong negative relationship. The correlational coefficient becomes an effect size when we square it. The R squared value is always positive, and in this case would be a 0.38. 38% of the variability in the y variable is accounted for by variability in the x variable. Well, how did I know that? Because r squared is the coefficient of determination. It's the squared value of our correlational coefficient. It is the proportion of variance in one variable explained by variance in the other. If you were writing up your correlational coefficient and your coefficient of determination for an APA style report, you would write it this way. The effect size for burnout, R squared equals 0.42, indicated that a large portion of the variability in job satisfaction, 42%, was accounted for by the level of burnout that the counselor experienced. Now, of course, you would want to customize this for your particular data set, but you could use this as your model for reporting the coefficient of determination. And now for something completely different. Causes of death. When we list the top five causes of death, we find the usual suspects of cancer and heart disease and COPD. But eventually, if we go down that list far enough, we're going to find a catch-all category titled other. This other category includes all the causes of death that were not specifically mentioned in the previous list. We can do something similar with our coefficient of determination. What about the variability that is not explained? That is a measure called the coefficient of alienation. It is 1 minus r squared. It is the proportion of variance in the y variable unexplained by variance in the x variable. This becomes more clear when we're using multiple regression, where we have two or three variables that are predicting a single y variable. We have variability accounted for by each of those three predictors, and then we have variability that is unexplained in our model. That would be the coefficient of alienation. If we were writing this up for an APA-style report, we might write something like this. 58% of the variability in job satisfaction was explained by factors other than level of burnout among counselors, such as low pay, excessive paperwork, and inadequate health insurance. Using the coefficient of determination for effect size and the coefficient of alienation also helps us to better understand the predictions that we're making with our correlational model.